Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 17th Tuesday in Ordinary Time. And today the Church remembers St. Pantelion. St. Pantelion was born in the year 275 in Nicomedia. Nicomedia was a part of first the Greek Grecian Empire, then the Roman Empire, and then the Ottoman Empire. And today it is located in the northwest part of modern day Turkey. St. Pantelion um, was born the son of a rich pagan, and he was instructed in Christianity by his mother, St. Eublua. However, after her death, he fell away from the Christian church and studied medicine and kind of lost his faith until he came across St. Hermolius, who was a bishop of the church of Nicomedia at the time, who convinced him that he may, have no, he may know the physical part of healing, but it is Christ who is the ultimate healer and faith must be trusted over medical advice. So he miraculously healed a blind man by invoking Jesus' name over him, and he converted his father, who was also a pagan, and he got involved in the Diocletian persecution, even though he was the emperor's physician. The emperor really liked him and wanted him to actually apostatize and, and denounce his Christianity, but he refused to do that. So he was condemned to death after healing a paralytic to try to prove that this was from God, but the emperor just credited that to magic. Now at first, the first thing they tried for Pantelion was to burn him with torches, and Christ appeared to him to he strengthen and heal him from these burns. And then a cauldron of molten lead was, was prepared, and as he was getting ready to be descended into the cauldron, the lead got cold, so he was spared again. And then they threw him to the wild beasts, but the wild beasts fawned over him, and until he, he blessed them, they wouldn't even leave him alone from, from taking care of him. And then he was bound on a wheel. But then the wheel, the ropes fell off, and he was saved. Then they tried to behead him, but the sword bent. And so his executioners, after seeing all this, converted to Christianity. And in their name, he implored heaven to forgive them. And so he was asking for mercy for everyone. And then finally, when he himself desired that it was possible to behead him, he was beheaded and gained the glorious crown of martyrdom. So St. Pantelion shows us that perseverance in our faith is rewarded by God, who, is, who will stay true to us if we stay true to him. So St. Pantelion, we ask you to please pray for us. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. <coughs> Let's say together the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say one Our Father and one Hail Mary for the conversion of sinners. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling, my resting place forever. In her will I dwell, for I prefer her. I will bless her with abundant provision. Her poor I will fill with bread. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, <clears throat> Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for your Son Jesus multiplied bread for the poor. Help us, who are nourished with the life of your Son, understand that we, like the apostles, must share our material goods with our brethren. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away, outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of clouds stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as one man speaks to another. Moses would re then return to camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations, and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin. Yet not declaring guilty guiltless, but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he heal, deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For us, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. 
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, although there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading today comes after a little gap that we've had from last Thursday. First off, Moses was up the mountain and he received the Ten Commandments. And then upon descending, he found, after he was up there for so long, the people were getting impatient and they built a molten golden calf what that they were worshiping. And this upset uh, Moses so much that he slammed those tablets down onto the ground and broke them because there's nothing worse than getting the commandments from God and seeing at least the very first one be broken as you just come down. So then Moses goes back to talking with God in the meeting tent and after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and just being with God for all those times, he comes back out again with a, the second copy of the Ten Commandments. And finally, we'll, we'll see how they accept it later. But those are made for us. They're given for us to give us a roadmap as to how best live in God. And then we come to our gospel today, which is also very interesting because the, the, the apostles are asking him, Jesus, to explain the parable of the weeds in the field. And what Jesus does is basically explain that the wheat and the weeds, they grow together, they have to, because you can't expel one without expelling the other until, until harvest time. And then everything is harvested and sorted out. And the weeds, their job is to try to choke out the wheat. And the wheat's job is to try to bloom and be as fruitful as possible. Isn't that the way it is in this world? There are those of us who follow Christ, and there are those of us who are enemies of Christ. And we intermingle every single day. And the enemies of Christ Try to choke out the good fruit of the ones who follow Christ and try to bring his truth to the world because that threatens the weeds. It takes away from the weeds. So it's that constant battle. But Jesus tells us at the final harvest, the end of the age, we will be sorted out. Those of us who followed the Ten Commandments, who followed the example of Christ, who loved God above all things and our neighbors ourselves, separated from those who tried to choke out the good, the true, the light. Brothers and sisters, our call as Christians is to be that fruit in a world of weeds, to be the wheat in a world of weeds. We need to be careful who we listen to, because there are many weeds who try to lead the wheat and choke them out. But we need to follow the king, Christ the king, our ultimate leader. Anything, any created person, 
who claims to be a leader tries to tell us if it contradicts Christ the King, it's a weed. If it brings us away from Christ the King, it's a weed. If it brings us away from any of the Ten Commandments, it's a weed. Let us be strong and fruitful, my brothers and sisters. Let us not give in to the weeds. Let us not be choked out. Let us use our voices and our bodies that God gave us in this world to proclaim his kingdom, his truth, and his light to all. Instead of having the weeds choke out the wheat, let us, the wheat, take the food from the weeds at its root and choke them out instead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Filled with the confidence and trust of our Lord, we turn to the Father with our prayers. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may boldly and faithfully point to Christ as the true bread and sustenance for every human need. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may guide all who are working to provide resources and relief to those affected by worldwide natural disasters. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that through the holy examples of Saints Anne and Joaquin, they may nurture, teach, and raise their children to know, love, and trust God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the frail, and the lonely, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may know the Lord's promise, I am with you always. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and who will die today, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, gather us together in Christ that we may live in peace and love as members of one body, fed on the one bread of life, the, Spirit, the same Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice, which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. 
Heavenly Father, accept this sacrifice of your Son, our gifts of bread and wine. Unite us around your altar that we may live a life worthy of your calling, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life. And by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 2, which is found on page 82 if you're following along. We have thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb, there he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering all those who believe in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church to gather all in unity. We ask to all who partake of these holy mysteries of the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever. Amen. In page 95, let us say together with confidence to the Father the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Bless it. Bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? bread which we break is it not a participation in the body of christ because there is one bread we who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread in the union of divinity and humanity in jesus christ bring us sanctification and eternal life amen lord jesus christ you said to your apostles i leave you peace my peace i give you do not look at our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, dona nobis pacem. Let us say together the second communion prayer, found on page 98 if you're following along. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you, my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your love, which comes to us in the sacred meal, teach us to live as you would have us live, so that we may find you in our midst where it pleases you to dwell. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace in our world, country, state, and localities with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, 
It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us today for our Holy Sacrifice and Mass. And thank you for bearing with us yesterday. There were some things that um, I had to do elsewhere. Um, pray that you can join us tomorrow and Thursday. And then we get on Sunday for the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So please make a note of our Ice Cream Social coming up August 15th. If you're in the area, we'd more than love to have you from 3 to 5 p.m. Again, Sunday, August 15th. Pray that you have a great day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And always remain in a state of grace. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, Blessed Trinity.